its divine order or it's in divine order to find yourself first before you find or you are found. Write that down. It's divine order to find yourself first before you, uh, you find a wife or you are found by a man. Before you find or are found, it's important to find yourself. Because if you don't find yourself, you don't have a part clearly defined in this purpose. And the Bible is full of people, individuals who were indifferent to the purpose of God joining them together. And I tell you, it's one of the most dangerous places to be when you're married. One of the most dangerous places to be when you're married is coming together with somebody when you have not yet found yourself. You have to find yourself first. It's one of the most fundamental laws that governs purpose. In finding out what God has called you for, you must find yourself first. Let me give us a typical example. Jacob flees from his house after his brother is looking for him. Then he goes in the household of one Laban, falls in love with a beautiful girl called who? Rachel. He wanted to marry Rachel. He loved Rachel. Circumstance, a mad uncle, after seven years of labor, switched and put the elder sister. And then he had to work another seven years for what? For Rachel. Jacob was a patriarch. He's one of the most defining individuals of biblical history. Isn't it? It is out of him that all the tribes of Israel derived their name. That's an important person in the history. Oh, was an Esau Jew? Yes, but God recognized Jacob and his offspring as the tribes of Israel because Esau sold his birthright. In selling your birthright, you sell your tribe. You sell your tribe. Now, I'm not talking of physical, I'm talking of spiritual. You sell the kind of things that should work in you automatically by reason of the order God has preset. Now, listen. So we see a woman who Jacob loved. Jacob is a man of God. Jacob has a relationship with God. Deeply. And the Bible doesn't tell us who Rachel is. Until a time when Jacob gets Rachel, Leah and all his children, and they are fleeing from Laban. And Laban notices that his gods are missing. His teraphim are gone. And he chases after them. And we realize that Rachel was sitting on those gods. Rachel, with Jacob, you still have a relationship with your father's teraphim. Do you get it? With the God you have seen on this man, he came in your father's house and made him wealthy. He got rods once and made them strict, put drinking places, got animals. These animals met it before your eyes, Rachel. And you saw these animals producing spotted and speckled offspring out of a man striking a branch of a tree. You see that kind of anointing. And as you're living, you get your father's teraphim and walk away with it. It means, in spite of the fact that she was serving, she was loving, she carried babies for an anointed man, she did not understand who Jacob was, neither did she know who she was in the history of Scripture. She never understood it. She never understood the God of Jacob, that he was a jealous God. She carried her father's images. So, 
That's why you need to find yourself and understand purpose. Because if you don't, you're going to go after a God without knowing. And you're going to break your marriage. And I know people who have broken their marriage. Do you know, if you read the book of Joshua, Rachel died at 45. That is the youngest a woman had ever died in the lineage, in that lineage in human history. That is the shortest a woman had ever died in a godly lineage. 45, Rachel was gone. Rachel was gone. That is God. And it's after she keeps the teraphim. What the Bible didn't tell us is the conversation after that and what Rachel kept in that house. God saw it and separated the two. He separated the two by killing her early. <laughs> People are dying before they're even supposed to die. People are failing before, without any reason in marriage. Why? Because they don't understand the power of firstly knowing who you are, who has called you and what he has called you to do. What is our mission as a couple? Every couple, before you get married to a man, or those of you who are married, sit him down and ask him, what is our purpose? What is our mission in this marriage? Do we have a mission? If we don't, why are we getting married? Why are we getting married? God wanted to fulfill something when he got Boaz to, to who? To Ruth. You see? There's always purpose. Adam and Eve, there was a purpose. Rebecca and Jacob, we see the purpose. Sarah and Abraham, we see the purpose. Whether she's barren or bears children, the point is, do you see the purpose? And see how the test comes within the purpose concerning Abraham and Sarah. That their responsibility is to father the world and mother the world. The Bible says even in the New Testament that Sarah is the mother of us all. And see how the attack comes in the place of purpose and how won't be shut. So it doesn't matter whether she's 90 or 100. She just needs to receive power to conceive seed. Purpose must be fulfilled. Some of the things disturbing your marriage is some of you are touching purpose. You just need to know what to do. You just need to know what to do and cling on the promise of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Building marriage God's way is building a marriage that God has joined and the joining of two people is the light and power of purpose. It is the animals that are carrying these yokes, plowing the fields, purpose. Carrying loads, purpose. What are we pulling together? What is our mission? If you have not yet found a mission, wait until you both find it. But in finding that mission, Find yourself. If you've not found yourself, don't waste somebody's time. Because you cannot commit when you have not found yourself yet. Identity precedes commitment. Never forget that. No man can commit when they have not found themselves. And commitment is bound to change when you find yourself. You see that? It's a pattern of growth that you begin with the imitations and then you find yourself, which is identity, and after identity, from identity into commitments. That's the order of the spirit. You cannot commit when you don't even know who you are yet. She married a man and the two of them were successful bankers. Are you hearing me? And then somehow this guy found himself and now they have trouble in the house. Because the man is praying a lot and he feels like God is calling him to become a pastor. Oh, so if you become a pastor, how are we going to have fees? How is it? Pastors are pure, are poor. Uh, what's her problem? 
they committed before finding themselves. Pray to God that you find yourselves. If you're already married, pray to God to find yourself if you've not yet found yourself. And by his grace, he is able to help you recommit or commit better in Jesus' mighty name. Let's raise our voices and thank God for this message. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God, 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 glory to God. My heart's prayer for all of us that are listening and watching. If you're not yet married, this message has prepared you. If you are married, this message is going to make your marriage meaningful. It's going to give purpose to your marriage. And where Papa sees, where Papa sees, many wars sees. Where Papa sees, divorce is not an option. Where Papa sees, grace is available. Where Papa sees, communication is aligned because you're on a mission and you have to agree. They can, you cannot separate any because the mission is frustrated. I pray for those of them that are dreaming one day to get married, that may you marry for God. Don't just marry because you're in love or what. No, marry for God above all and choose God's best. Choose God's best. And those of you who messed up, ask for grace. There is still a way. God can do it. He, he knows what to do. Don't, don't break what God, you, you allow him to do what he must do because he's God. He is infinite. We, we cannot limit him to our mistakes. Father, we thank you because our marriages are stronger and better in Jesus' name.